The second Boxcar Children book came out 25 years after the original. That's a long time to wait for a sequel. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. The book begins with a surprise! Grandfather is so rich that he owns an abandoned island, and he's decided the Boxcar Children can spend the summer there, living inside an old barn. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that Grandfather doesn't like his grandkids. A sailor named Captain Daniel lives on the island. He doesn't show up all that much, his only purpose in life is to give the kids groceries from the mainland so they don't starve to death. Good job, Captain Daniel. The important character in this book is Captain Daniel's roommate, a mystery man named Joe. Joe has amnesia because he broke his arm. Um, how does that work exactly? Arm-breaking amnesia? Joe's amnesia has been cured like months ago, but he still hasn't rejoined society yet because his arm kinda hurts. Sort of a weak excuse to hide out on an abandoned island, if you ask me. Anyway, the mystery of the book is to figure out who Joe is. The kids set up house in the barn and they get settled on the island. They make friends with Joe and we get clue number one. Joe knows the name of a type of seaweed. Oh my, a seaweed mystery, how mysterious. Henry gets an idea. They should start a museum. The museum will showcase all of the birds and flowers on the island. Not sure why you would make a museum for an abandoned island, but the boxcar children are very excited about the project and they put a lot of work into building a museum inside their barn. Joe wants to help the kids with their museum, so he goes to the library to get them some books. The mystery deepens when Joe takes the books straight from the shelves instead of asking the librarian where the books are. It's like he's been to a library before! Dun dun dun! The kids explore the island and find a cave that's filled with interesting stuff. Joe recognizes these items as Indian artifacts. Clue number three, Joe knows a lot about Indians. Have you figured out a secret identity yet, detectives? I should note that all throughout the book we have short one-chapter adventures like the kids searching for clams or the kids checking lobster traps. In one chapter, Violet decides she wants to learn how to play violin, but she's conflicted because if she takes lessons, it means she can't be with her brothers and sister all the time. This doesn't have anything to do with the plot, but I just thought I should mention it because it's basically the first time Violet has been interesting in this series. Grandfather visits the island to make sure the kids are still alive. It turns out that when he was a boy, he made his own museum! Today it's a full-blown museum in the middle of town, so being boring runs in the family. You might have noticed that the boxcar children aren't even trying to solve the Joe mystery anymore. In fact, at this rate, they'll never figure out who the guy is. So in order to solve the mystery, the book introduces a man named Mr. Browning. Browning says outright that Joe is... Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Before the big revelation, let's review the various clues about Joe's identity. Number one, he knows about seaweed. Number two, he knows where library books are. Number three, he knows a lot about Indians. Figured it out? Joe is the director of Grandfather's Museum. And more than that, he's the boxcar children's long-lost cousin. Because, hey, why not? They've got a cousin now. Not sure why he wasn't mentioned in the previous book when the family had a custody debate over the orphan kids, but whatever! They've got a cousin and it's amazing! The book ends with a birthday party for Benny. Joe reunites with Grandfather. Grandfather is so happy that Joe's still alive, he overlooks the fact that Joe disappeared for a year for no real reason. After this, the boxcar children go home at the end of the summer, and Grandfather blatantly sets up the storyline for the next book in the series. The end. Postbook follow-up. This book is not much of a mystery. It's kind of impossible to guess that Joe is the cousin of the boxcar children when their cousin has never been mentioned before, ever. Instead of calling it a mystery, I'd say this book is more of a continuation of the first book. It's just a collection of fun, short episodes about four kids living on their own. And in that sense, it's a really good book. I liked it. In fact, when I read these books as a kid, I was kind of disappointed that the series turned into mysteries after this book. I liked seeing the boxcar children have adventures by themselves. Now that I'm older, 
My main reaction to the book is, wow, grandfather is super negligent. He abandons his kids so they can live in a barn all summer. The kids are sleeping in old hay instead of beds and the roof leaks. These are not safe living conditions for children. Grandfather, you need to be more responsible. Here's something fun. The one person who knows Joe's identity is Dr. Moore. That's the guy who refused to tell Grandfather about the kids in the first book. Yeah, once again, Dr. Moore is keeping people's secrets for no reason. I suspect Dr. Moore will become a villain in the later books. Overall, I like this book. It's a worthy sequel in that it's longer and more interesting than the original. I give Boxcar Children number 2, Surprise Island, a 9 out of 10, taking away a point for that impossible mystery.